We acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and culture. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. This is Cheryl from Jajawarong Country. All right, I think we're live now on Facebook and we're also recording. We'll have this podcast going live to heaps of different places. You can find it all over. My name's Cheryl Downs. Welcome to the Beyond 90 podcast. My pronouns are she, her, and we say that specifically because we also jump onto the Joy uh, Digital Radio and very proud to have them hosting our podcast as well. Today, I've got two special guests for you. Firstly, I've got Molly Appleton, who, you know, hangs around us quite a bit. I think she likes us. She keeps coming back. So great to have you on board, Molly, and great that you're on holiday. It's good to be back. Good to be free on a Monday night to have a chat. Oh, thanks, Molly. And no no doubts on Molly whatsoever, but even better than Molly today, we've actually got Catherine Zimmerman forward for Melbourne Victory. Massive win last season. Great to have you on board. Thanks, Zim, for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Uh, well, the show's all about you to start off with. Um, so we want to ask you a bunch of crazy questions or not crazy, actually, just regular questions. But one of the things that we do at the start of the podcast each time is that we talk about history of the game and we specifically go through the list of Matildas in line with the cap number, in line with our episode numbers. So we're up to episode 71 at the moment. So I want to let you know that cap number 71 for the Matildas was Tracy Jenkins. Now, we actually requested an interview from Tracy because she's out and about still in the football world, heavily active. She was born in Wales and played her junior football in South Australia before she became a two-time South Australian League Golden Boot winner. So she's kind of around your team not local territory or geographic territory, but in terms of golden boot sim, she's kind of your kind of player. She only made one appearance for the Matildas, and that was back in 1991 in a friendly against New Zealand. Tracy currently holds a B licence and is coaching West Adelaide, who finished second in South Australia's NPLW. So, yeah, shout out to Tracy. Sad that we couldn't get a couple of words from you on the podcast, but maybe one day we will get you on board. All right, let's throw it to Zim now. Plenty of questions for you. But firstly, how was the off season for you, given that football was cancelled in Victoria? How did you stay sane? Uh, that's a good question. Um, it was definitely tough doing it a second time around. Like, I think a lot of us thought we were like out of the woods this year, um, as far as the lockdowns go. Um, but yeah, luckily, like I still was able to, I mean, I don't know if I should say this. I still saw my teammates and friends, <laughs> um, go to the field, try and catch up and do a workout and where I was living, you know, like, they had a gym. So I'm still able to keep fit. And that was, that was probably the only thing that kept me going. Like that was what I looked forward to during the day was my workout, basically training. Um, but yeah, it was definitely tough. Uh, I think we all, everyone had their struggles with it, you know, the ups and downs that come with it, but got through it and hopefully, hopefully it's done no more. <laughs> yeah. Is it a little bit harder because, I mean, based on your accent, you're not a, um, a Melbourne sort of local from ever and ever, that disconnection with, family and friends from far away as well and the limited opportunity for them to be able to come here though now it's changed or vice versa for them to for you to go there as well yeah definitely like after after w last year i was pretty set on going home and i thought i would have been able to like finagle a way to do that um but i was just kind of advised like not to and it turned out to be for the right reason because i would have been trying to get back around a month ago when everything was really bad here again. So um, I'm glad I stayed ultimately, but yeah, it was definitely tough. Um, I was ready to kind of go home and get a break and see my family and friends back home. But um, ultimately I think it was better soccer wise. Cause again, I was still able to be here and train. And when I'm here, it's like, this is like my work, uh, obviously say that lightly cause soccer is far from work and I'm very fortunate <laughs> that it's my job, but when I go home like that is like my break time. So when I was like stayed here, it's like that is I still am focusing on soccer mainly. So I think ultimately like my career, I think was probably better that I stayed. 
Okay, it's the silver lining somehow in the in this world that's just been a little bit weird lately. I want to throw to last season, and specifically, I want to throw to the fact that that was the first season that you've been part of the Victory Squad. What's with that? Because it's it honestly feels like, and, and I'm a massive Victory fan. I live in um, in Melbourne. I've been following the W League for so long, but mm. it just feels like you've been part of the game and and part of Victory for way longer than one season. I, I wonder what that's about. Does it have something to do with the win? Is it something to do with the camaraderie? Because it just feels like that team has connected so much, and the players are just you know they're just Victory. Yeah, I think that's very true. Uh, obviously. Like year to year, like teams change. Um, And I think last year was like a big change from the previous years, if I'm correct in saying that. I think I am. Um, But I think we all knew each other and knew of each other because it was pretty much kind of the best of NPL, basically, plus like give it to you from interstate overseas and stuff. Um, But yeah, I don't know. I I think that's very true. It's like all been playing with or against each other for the past few years, anyways. So coming together we're already kind of maybe that that step ahead and maybe didn't have like the awkward first stage where you're trying to get to know each other and like off the field and on the field we already kind of had the ideas and like the groundwork for that um right off the bat so I think that definitely helps with our camaraderie on and off the field you know yeah, I've got a list of about 20 questions or 10 maybe, but I'll ask one more and then I'll throw to Molly as well. But given that this was your first season for victory, was it a success for you personally as much as it was for the for the club and the team? Obviously, it was a massive success, but for the goals that you had specifically, did it hit the mark? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it exceeded my expectations in a lot of ways as a team individually. I was my performance, I think. No, I don't think any competitor would say like, oh, yeah, I'll just stop there. Like, I think the goal now is to do better than last year individually and as a team. Um, but, yeah, I was pretty happy with it. And still sometimes I'm in disbelief that it all happened. <laughs> like, I look back, and I'm just like, like kind of pinch myself. I'm like, oh, yeah, we just we won last year. But, again, you kind of want to focus on what's coming in the future too. So try to move on from that and, you know, do better, I think. Do, do better than win the season. Fair enough. High <laughs> aspirational goals. Um, Zim, we're getting a little bit of um, background ruffling as well. It might be a mic. But anyway, throw to you now, Molly, for 20 questions of your own. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I find the Melbourne teams really fascinating from last year in terms of uh, particularly Melbourne City, City didn't do that well compared to usual, whilst obviously Melbourne Victory, you were – chugging away for a few seasons trying to get to the finals and you know you got there and, and won it which broke my Sydney FC heart <laughs> but do you think that. um and you know of course COVID like we all know it's impacted Melbourne a lot more than than elsewhere in Australia and perhaps the world but do you think that sort of momentum will carry through to next season I see that you know a lot of players have stuck around to some degree whilst there has been some movement it looks like you've got a really strong core still still there that's part of it how are you guys sort of looking to attack that without the as much of the MPL that you would have hoped to have got into the legs especially if some of maybe the younger players that are hanging around on the fringes yeah I think that's the other thing too we were fortunately like exempt uh or allowed to train like starting I don't even know maybe September end of August into September so I think we were lucky to be able to do that um we all were able to come together and, and train and there's a few weeks where it was like every day almost and uh, we kind of scaled back a little bit but yeah I think it was uh, that period of time was almost like again it was a, maybe a blessing in disguise that we had the lockdown um just for this reason was that we were able to come together sooner as a team and like start training together and be together on on and off the field again. So um, I think it's almost created like less of an off season with the team. So hopefully, you know, that translates. And I think that will be a good thing for us because we had those extra couple months of training and preparing for the season. Yeah. And with those extra couple of months, what's the feel within, within the group? Obviously I know that it's a long time ago since the final, but you'll still obviously have a bit of, bit of buzz about that. Um, 
But yeah, what what is the feel and how is preseason? I know that there has been some preseason matches with other clubs, so I'm going to guess. Can I interrupt too. just for a moment as well, Molly? That buzz is going to be with me for the rest of my life. That victory beat Sydney like that. Just no, saying. I'm you know. just thinking about <laughs> round fourteen or. It was around four, yeah, around fourteen. That's all I've got in my head. <laughs> Sorry, Zim, I've stolen the question. <laughs> Take it away. I just, I just wanted to heckle Molly. <laughs> I support it. I support it. <laughs> um, no, I think, yeah, the everyone's pretty positive. I think again, yeah, there is that buzz from last year, um, and we want to try and defend what we did last year. And again, like I said, do better. Like we can always, we can always, always do better. So, um, yeah, I think it's just about you know taking things day by day and being positive and consistent and there's no reason why we if we do that and stick to that plan like we shouldn't do better than last year I think excellent um and I mean new leadership uh in terms of just captaincy with Kayla Morrison uh coming in and I presume that there's just a bit of that fresh blood coming into the leadership uh with some of the changes that have happened such as you know Angie B going going overseas um how's that all looking yeah it's good I mean obviously losing losing Angie has a like player captain and and a friend like she was one of my best friends mm. here in Melbourne so um it was like bittersweet to see her go uh but can't wait for her to come back she's playing in the Matildas games hopefully coming up so that'll be exciting um but yeah no I think the changes like I think yeah Kayla will be and is like already a great captain I think she's a great leader she's the voice of our team like you you hear her like over over anyone on the on the field when you're playing and I think she's just well respected and she's just like a natural leader in that way. Um, so I, I like, I'm, I'm proud of her. I'm happy for her. And I think she's going to do a great job. And I think it's cool. We kind of have similar stories or we came to MPL, didn't really break into W league. She went back overseas and then came back and now she's a W league champion. And now she's a captain. It's, it's, it's just like, it's amazing. So I'm happy for her. And I think she truly deserves it. So speaking of Angie, you have your own podcast with her, the A to Z or A to Z podcast. <laughs> yeah. um, you haven't uh, you haven't recorded or you haven't pushed anything out. I'm sure you probably talk to her daily, but uh, you haven't pushed anything out to the listeners since about September. So are we likely to see something else on there in, in I don't know, the near future? And, and does the podcast give you the freedom to express yourself a little bit and talk about issues beyond football as well? Yeah, I mean... So we, we tried to we have like a mid season break um, and tried to like start things up again, but just, I don't know, time difference. Season was just the schedule. Um, but now that Angel will be back in Australia, we should be able to like knock out a few and hopefully get some guests and some good topics on there. Um, but yeah, I don't know. For me, I probably said in the first episode, she's like shoved me out of my comfort zone because I'm not one to like public speaking is my thing. <laughs> so now I'm doing a podcast where I am publicly speaking like to anyone whoever wants to listen. Um, but I think ultimately it's been good for me as a, as a person to develop that skill, maybe to be better at speaking. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been fun. It's been fun to have guests on and kind of gives us, you know, just something to do, some, like talk about different topics. We try not to get too, too serious, try to keep it light and, and fun, you know? Um, I think the best part of it is when we have our business meetings and we're planning, usually the business meeting is at some type of brunch place <laughs> where we just go out to get food or coffee. So um, yeah, it's been, it's actually been quite fun to be honest. Um, speaking of fun, and I hope this is funny, otherwise it's just going to fall really flat, but I wanted to ask if Angie manages your Wikipedia page, because one of the things that's written on there, it says Zimmerman went to Providence college. Her freshman year was a little slow. <laughs> I'm just like, did she write that? But anyway, it goes on to say, nevertheless, she managed to score seven goals and notched an assist leading the team in, in points. For You had 15 points. The follow-on question would be, what did you study in at Providence and does that lend itself to your future, to your football future or your personal future? I studied psychology with like a business minor. Um, and I don't know, I've not a sure, shot. The, not sure exactly what I want to do after soccer. I could see myself doing something in sports psych or sports business because those kind of, you know, coincide with those two um, majors and minor, basically. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I, I've thought about coaching. I, I don't know. <laughs> Try not. To, I should think about it more and should plan ahead. But, um, 
as of now, I haven't really used my <laughs> degree. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, it's a fantastic time to be in women's football in particular with the, the I mean, there's plenty of people who've been involved in football a lot and particularly men's football, but the authenticity that we have with women being involved in football and women loving football and the opportunities, hopefully, that they get in football as well is a massive thing. Molly, some more questions from you? Um, oh, I did have a couple of questions and now I got distracted and I started reading something else and um, I suppose... What I was wondering um, was for, for this upcoming season, what are some of your goals for the season for yourself? And I know we've sort of touched on that, I think more from a team angle, but, um, you know, what's some of the elements to your game that you're hoping to bring or just improve on a little bit to, to cause more terror to us Sydney FC fans? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I think I would like to, again, do better than I did last year. So score some more goals, but, um also I think I only had one assist last year so if I could get um get that number up I'd be happy <laughs> you know like set my teammates up a bit more put in better crosses and um yeah just get that stat up would be I'd be happy with that I think yeah. all right and then we've got oh sorry Molly you wanted to uh, ask some more go. questions that's, that's I was just right. going to throw in so we normally have another host we have Eric who joins us who unfortunately I think he's working today but he wanted to throw in a couple of fun questions and answer any or all of these that you wish to but funniest teammate at victory funniest teammate <laughs> everyone everyone's so funny and I'm easily amused so <laughs> um hmm. <laughs> I mean, Maya Markovsky is pretty funny. Polly, their whole their whole relationship. Like sometimes you can just watch watch them and you just like laugh because they're just really silly. <laughs> um, I mean, if Angie still counts, I think she's pretty entertaining. Um, Kayla's funny too. Like just her, like how she speaks and how she like kind of like delivers what she says. Like kind of cracks me up. Um, but yeah, I think every, everyone is funny in their own way. Like, and again, I, I might because I'm easily amused and just laugh at a lot everything. Um, I yeah. love it. Easily <laughs> amused is not a bad thing, I don't think. Most annoying teammate. Most annoying. <laughs> oh god. Um, <laughs> <laughs> played the fifth. Yeah, I'll play the fifth. <laughs> smartest teammate. Uh, smartest. Who's the smartest? Um, maybe Casey, Casey Dumont. She's my roommate. She's a nurse. Yeah. Um, she's pretty smart. Emma Robers is pretty smart. Yep. Um, it's probably a few others too. And who's the hardest working in training? Um, hmm, I should say myself. No, I'm just kidding. Um, why not? Go, go for on. it. <laughs> no. Put yourself out there. No, hardest working. I think I think Polly, Polly Doran, she works works pretty hard. Um yep. in training and games, you know, she's always, you know, just busting her butt, I think. And then the final question that I've got on this list before we probably throw to Molly for her to ask one or two more. Coach's pet, is there such a thing? Coach's pet. Um I don't know. I don't think there is one, honestly. I think everyone has their own like good really. Um um, but I wouldn't say there's anyone that is like <laughs> the suck up or like the pet of the group. Does does every and sorry, hey Dale, thank you for joining. And I just throw in my final question as well. Although I said that was my final, but does everyone love Jeff? Is Jeff right. Hopkins? Does everyone love Jeff Hopkins? Is he just like he just seems so calm and chill? And in the in the days where we've lo- watched a lot of football with coaches going mad in the, on the sidelines. He just seems like a, you know, he's going to bring out the best in the players because of his his way of working. Yeah, I definitely I definitely agree with that. Like, he'll obviously like any coach. I think he'll yell or give advice when he needs to. Like the other day, I heard him yell. That was probably the loudest I've ever heard him yell one time. Like in training, I was like, oh, I was kind of like taken aback. But yeah, no, I think the way he like holds himself and acts is very professional, and you know, makes it easy to communicate with him as a coach like yeah he's, he's a great coach a great person too 
Cool. Thanks for that, Zim. Oh, just to a, a quick introduction to our listeners and to yourself as well. We've just had Dale Roots has joined the podcast for us. Dale, I don't know if you've had a chance to think of a question, but it might be an opportunity to throw to Molly, give you a second to work out your question, or otherwise Molly's back in the hot seat. Molly, you can take the hot seat, please. Easy. My question is, um, in f- similar uh, vein of the fun questions, does anyone have an unusual uh, pre-game routine that they, you know, have to do or, you know, they've got to wear their lucky socks or something like that? Um, trying to think. Well, AJ, AJ has poly braid her hair and they usually take a picture, like a pre-game picture and post it on the plats by Polly. <laughs> um, that's a shout out for their Instagram at Platts by Polly, I think. Um, yeah, that's probably, I can't really think of any others that stand out too much. That's probably the main like free game ritual. I think my hair is getting long enough to plait these days. Pre-COVID, I used to have really short hair. Dale, you probably we probably all had really short hair. Now, Polly must be super busy because everyone's hair has grown, at least in Victoria, where we couldn't get haircuts in New oh, South Wales as well. I actually cut my hair the other day, too. <laughs> I, was like, I had to go I and get a haircut, cut, but I was like, I'm not going to cut my hair in like months. two years. <laughs> We might have to um, see if we can get Polly on the podcast next time around just so we can get some hairdressing tips, something that we're sorely in need of. Speaking of sorely in need of haircuts, Dale. I was going to say, you're, you've are you been at uh, Melbourne for, for a full what, a full season at this stage. Um, well, what's the thing? Is, has there been anybody that you've played with at, at the VUC that's like kind of surprised you in whether it's like on the field or off the field? Has there been anybody that surprised you really? um well as far as like how they play or yeah yeah or just kind of like how they are around the traps and things like that oh uh, um i don't know i guess off the bat not really again like we came into like last year all the girls kind of knew each other or knew of each other so we, like played against each other or you know i've been out around melbourne together and um so we all we all kind of had an idea of each other i can't, I can't really think of anything that's stood out um that has like shocked me i think i kind of went into it knowing knowing what to expect i guess in that sense fair enough all right maybe we'll jump into our next topic and and like i said zim you can jump off anytime you want but what we're going to talk about next is the matildas and the u.s women's national team squads have both been announced for the upcoming games between between them the first one on saturday i am flying to sydney to um rewrite the record books and make sure australia gets a bit of a win over the u.s could be something that's achievable because australia has kind of gone all in with their squad I, i think you know they've gone as good as they could get the USA are in a bit of a rebuilding phase and, and that's not that the uh, their players have necessarily retired or anything but they're definitely throwing in some new caps and new players um, Emily Gilnick closing in on 50 caps is one of the big pieces of news for Australia at the very least but um, Tamika Yellop if she gets on the pitch for either of those matches will hit her century so 100 matches for Tamika Yellop and then we look at Sam Kerr just scored three ga- three goals in the first half in her match for Chelsea but if she scores one or two goals in the upcoming Tillies matches she'll become Australia's highest ever goal scorer woman or man so um, I don't know your thoughts Molly on the squad for the Matildas. For the Matildas. Um, I think it's I think it's pretty much almost what we were expecting at this point. Um, you know, we've got a few few youngsters in there and I think we've got a couple who will have their debut and their first time, such as, you know, Jessica Nash, Charlie Rule. They're both two really exciting players that it'll be great to see them step up into that senior environment. Um, but I think it's... It's much of, you know, what we're expecting. I think um, we'll probably put out similar teams to what we have done and hopefully some of those players, such as Angie Beard, you know, who's, who's had 10 or 15 minutes on the field and has played well, hopefully they can get a few more minutes on the field. Um, but, yeah, I think it's a good squad. We've got some good players around. I think we've balanced it quite well with the, um, you know, with the – with experienced and and you know that in, bit more inexperienced and I think um obviously whilst you said the US are probably in a more building stage I think we have been as well and we've probably just taken that step one or two games before the US so it doesn't 
doesn't necessarily feel like a great shock when the squad was announced. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's exciting. Um, and I'm really interested to see how how we match up. Zim, for you, your thoughts on maybe the Aussie squad, I don't know how close you are to um, thoughts on the formation of the squad or the players in the squad and some of them that you may have come across in the W League, but also in terms of the USA, what are your thoughts on the way that, I mean, their their development program is way better than Australia's program. So these players, even though they may only have a couple of caps, they're probably far and away experienced players and, and really good on the ball versus Australia bloods them really young so you know you're getting 15 16 17 year olds jump jumping into the Aussie squads yeah I was always like shocked by that like when I first came here how young um a lot of the Matildas were and I think yeah it just comes down to the way the development is kind of set up in the U.S. is like you're developing to go to college basically and then during that time maybe before during and then especially after that's when like the professional career might start or the national team career might start. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I might get might get uh, excommunicated for saying this, but I think I'm, I'll definitely be supporting <laughs> Australia for these next couple of games. Um, Sounds perfect. Yeah, this is what we want. I got my Aussie flag there. Yeah, I love it. Love it. Yeah, we've. I've got. I've got my Aussie kit on. I, I can't see anything on Dale, but you can have a costume change at halftime or something or other. <laughs> Just another question, actually, for you, for you, Zim. How hard is it to get noticed in the US football system or soccer system, given that there are so many people playing it? If you're in the pathway, it's great. You're being seen. You're probably being coached all the time. But if you're not in it, um, we have had some player pathway consultants come on the podcast as well to talk about how it works. Um, yeah, I mean, there's that's the thing I've always said is that there's just so many players there like in general there's more people in the U.S. too so it's like it just like it's there's definitely like more competition um I think and yeah maybe harder to get seen um I, I don't know I mean there's there's more clubs there's more players it's I don't know I, I, I don't want to say like I'm someone that flew under the radar I think I think I am I never really had national team exposure I went to like national like ID camps but it was never like the full national team setup um but I think that just goes to show that, you know, to anyone that wants to have a professional career, like that's not the only pathway out there basically is, is to do national team or the ODP or your the ECNL, like all, all the different leagues or clubs or like systems you can get into there. It's the same with here, you know, you're not just, just because you're in uh, NDC, like that's not the only way to get to where you want to go. So I think that's the main, main thing is just that, yeah, there's, all different routes and there's all different ways to get to where you want to go. Yep. Mm. And I think the W League's a good opportunity for some of those players from the US to come over and, and get some airtime and send some reels back to, to different places as well. Dale, some of your thoughts on the the squad either for the US or for Australia? I, I think um, I, I agree with what Molly said. I think the the, the Matilda squad, it's it's kind of what we expected, as we said. But, I mean, in the same way, it's it's amazing to see that you've got uh, the the US team that they've selected really only has about six or seven players into this, I don't know, like 30 player squad that have more than like 25 caps. Um, and I don't think that, I mean, really since I've been watching football, uh, the US have gone through that kind of t- complete and total rebuild. Um, and I know that as, as uh, you guys were saying was that you know, we're kind of in a rebuilding phase, but at the same time, like throughout the U S women's soccer history, there's always been those players who have been constantly blooded, constantly getting, you know, 25, 40 caps, you know, the, the tournaments that they play in, whether it's, you know, the, well, now the sheep leaves cup, but also the Olympics and conquer cap tournaments and things like that. But now you're seeing this team where like Emily Sonnet played like less than 10 minutes at the 2019 world cup. And she's, I think the third most experienced player in the squad, which I mean, First of all, Emily Sonnet, very good defender uh, and, you know, former Portland Thorn, so I have a very soft spot for her. Um, but it's just, it's it's incredible and it speaks to, as, as you were saying, Zim, about, like, the fact that there are these, effectively, like, every college or every college that plays D1 is, like, a, you know, a professional setup. Like, you're getting these players who are coming in at 21, 22, who have effectively, since the age of 17, been playing, uh, you know, 
professional level, obviously not being compensated. We can talk about that another time, but um, you know, that they're going to be getting this immense exposure and not just on the field, but being treated like athletes off the field as well, as well as having to obviously study. Um, So it'll be interesting to see how those younger players uh, front up. I mean, in saying that there's, I just had a quick browse through the squad and like um, Jane Campbell, who's been, you know, arguably one of the two best goalkeepers in MWS over the last three years is probably going to be the starting goalkeeper. Bella Bixby, who was at the Thorns this year, been fantastic all season. Um, She's, you know, going in potentially going to be debuting. You look at players all the way from there to like the other end of the pitch, you've got Ashley Hatch, Bethany Balser, Morgan Weaver, again, who have all been really, really consistently good over the last two seasons in in NWSL, finally getting a chance. And I think that that's, really good for the U S and really, really worrying for everyone else because you've got these players who are going to be 24, 25, 26, who've got no caps and they're kind of just hitting the spot where they need to be making international debuts. And that now they're going to be going and seeing what they're made of. And if they can continue that form, the U S is going to have a player pool, like a hundred players going into the next world cup. Yeah, scary thoughts. Which is Let's terrifying. move on. From, I want. I don't like horror stories, so we're going to move on from that and talk about the happy news. Um, Sam Kerr has re-signed with Chelsea for two more years, which is fantastic news. news for Sammy. She should have maybe held off a little bit. Just having scored a hat trick, she might have been able to negotiate a little bit harder. But I'm sure she's got something pretty good going on. Haley Razzo is re- releasing a children's book called Haley's Ribbons. I've tried to find some links to that, but I can't find out anything right now. Also, shout out for a couple of happy birthdays as well so happy birthday to josh cavallo who we talked about a couple of weeks ago in an era where we're celebrating the first australian professional male footballer coming out it's great to see actually how it's normalized for so many women to celebrate their authentic selves in we saw magdalena erickson and peniel harder for they were photographed for a magazine so it's just very normal in the women's world bit different in the men's world have to say shout out to madge for happy birthday for her and all also a shout out to Molly. Happy birthday to her. Everyone's having mm. birthdays. Zim, it's not your birthday, is it? No, it's not. Molly, it's your birthday? I was on Friday. Oh, okay. Yeah. Happy late birthday then. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Cool. I want right. to see more W League teams fans singing their players' happy birthday. This is ah. what we need. This is the quality content we need in the W League. All right, Zim, the when's A-League your birthday woman. and we'll, we'll be out there singing for you? Um, January next. I think we play on the 16th. Sorry, that was January 15th. Well, that, yeah. great to have January babies is the best babies. I'm a January baby as well. Oh, All man. right. R- really big news, actually. Saudi Arabia is launching an inaugural women's football league. Don't know how that flew under the radar for a lot of places, but really interesting to see how that goes. Um, and a couple of dub signings. I don't know uh, if I point at Dale or Molly. Can you take us through some dub signings? Molly, you can take this one. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um have they been official with Liz Ralston and um I'm gonna butcher her name and I'm really well, sorry. Um, Liz Mar- Ralston. Margot Chavez. Margot yeah. Chavez, yep. I clearly didn't take French in high school. <laughs> um have they been announced? Because apparently Liz Ralston hadn't been. Uh, she was she was somebody was scrolling away on the Western Sydney Wanderers website looking for some player information and found that. So, hmm. How about you, Zim? S- Is everyone announced for victory at the moment? That's on the um on the website. Are they actually officially <laughs> announced? Because sometimes they get announced via Instagram when they're just in someone's photo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I think every everyone's everyone's been everyone who's here has been announced, and I think it's a full full squad right now. Yeah. All right, we're, we're hoping for something hot to drop on that, but nothing <laughs> nothing hot <laughs> dropping there. Um, and Ashley Brodigan was spotted with Newcastle Jets in a squad photo as well there. So, it, you know, great to see we're only about nine or ten days, maybe, oh, sorry, I've counted wrong, 11 or 12 days away from the W League starting the first match on Friday the 3rd of December tw- between Wellington Phoenix and the Western Sydney Wanderers. So we definitely see those last couple of signings coming through, which is great. Keep going around the world for the moment. And we had some Women's Champions League matches and results coming through from there. Dale, this is normally your forte. It is. 
so I think the big news of the weekend, aside from uh, Sam Kerr chucking them in uh, for Chelsea, was Benfica scored their first uh, win in, in women's European football. Benfica, obviously, a powerhouse in the men's game, um, but great to see them pick up their first win, uh, a last-minute goal against BK Hecken away uh, for a 2-1 win. Barcelona uh, thrashed Hoffenheim away as well with a 5-0 win. Bayern got a surprise 1-0 win over Leon. That was at the Bayern campus. And it was Saki Kumagai who actually scored the goal in that one. I believe it was Leon's first loss since August, which is pretty incredible. Uh, Arsenal scored a 3-0 win over HB Kerr. Uh, I believe, St- uh, sorry, Caitlin Ford scored in the, so Caitlin Ford scored the opener in that one. That was 1-0 at halftime. And then who else but Viv Miedemar scored uh, for Arsenal and Lotta Wubben Moy as well. Uh, Juventus scored a, a pretty important 2-0 away win at Wolfsburg. Um, that group with Chelsea is really hotting up at the moment. Uh, Kaki have got a 2-0 win away in Breitherblick, uh, our favourite away trip this season. PSG got a 2-0 win away in Real Madrid. And I think the pretty pretty impressive result, we did mention that Sam Kerr was chucking them in in, in the WSL. She got the only goal for uh, Chelsea against Servette. Uh, the Swiss champions who did feature uh, Tess Tamplin, I believe, got a, a run out for that one as well. Um, but yeah, sh- I mean, she's not my queen of the week this week, but I've got to say, uh, uh, Servette's goalkeeper, uh, who was Servette? I believe, I believe it's Isabella Pereira, had an absolute wow of a game against Chelsea. Chelsea probably could have won that game about, about five or six nil, but she had an absolute stonker of a game. So big ups to her. All right, cool. Let's thank you very much for that. We'll whip around for some of the rest of the results in the leagues around the world. So, in Japan, um, Alex Chidiak, Jeff Chiba were one all draw against San Freke, Hiroshima, Regina. Sorry, um, Zim, for my pronunciation, way worse than Dale is normally the best at this, but I I can probably pronounce these UK ones. So, Manchester City uh, had a 5 0 victory over Aston Villa. Pretty close. Manchester United, similar, sounds all right, got it coming. Uh, lost 2-0 to Arsenal in the match with um, Chelsea. You had a 5-0 victory over Birmingham City. West Ham United had a 1-0 victory over Tottenham as well. So, And as well as Conti Cup matches have been going on and, and around. In the Scottish WPL, Celtic had a 3-1 win over Aberdeen. So that's where we have Jacinta Galabatarachichi, just proving that I can pronounce some things. Um, And then Glasgow City with Aoife Colville had a 5-1 victory over Motherwell. And then we move on to Europe. Lyon had a 4-0 victory over Izzy FF. And then Montpellier had a 1-0 victory over Bordeaux. I think Mary Fowler was definitely on the team sheet. She didn't score this time around. She does score a lot of goals. In Italy, they've got a break until the 4th of December, so we won't see Alamastra Antonio or Ivy Luke for just a little while and in the Netherlands there was a one all victory uh, one all draw between PSV so Amy Harrison's space and Zwolle I'm not sure if it's called Zwolle but hey anyone challenge me and perfect timing we've just had Stefan join the podcast to take us through the Nordic rap after which we'll jump pretty quickly onto Queens of the Week. Hi everyone good day Jim good to have you on board and um, Molly lovely to have you back. Really good to have you back on the pod. Um, this is going to be the last Nordic rap for the year. It's the last league with the Aussies playing in um, over there and um, the last round. So uh, this is over in Denmark. They played round 14. And first of all, it was a, uh, a really good 4-1 win to Fortuna Hearing, where we've got uh, India Page Riley, Claire Wheeler, Angie Beard and Alex Swin. Um, they played well, very well against their, uh, their longtime rivals, uh, Brunby, IF, uh, Claire, Angie and Indy all started the game and played that, that all three of those played most of the game. Alex was an unused substitute. Indy had a really strong game. She delivered two really good balls in from the right wing um, for two of the goals. So good on, good on Indy for those. And the team had a really good season as it turned out. They finished second with 10 wins, three draws and a single loss. And they've qualified for the next Champions League. So uh so well done. And of course, Angie and Claire are part of the Matilda squad for this coming weekend. And um, towards the other end of the ladder, I think Jenna, had a, Jenna McCormick had a really fun fun year then and, and probably enjoyed her time there. And it's the impression you get from, from everything that we're seeing about what she's doing there. Um, she's played in every 
every game pretty much 90 minutes. So she did that again on the weekend. Um, they drew two all at home against the bottom side AAB, which is from they're from uh, Alborg. Um, so their season, they, yeah, second last, they're going to be playing in the relegation playoffs. Uh, they started started off quite well. We're climbing towards mid table up to around fifth, but they fell away in the second half of the season. Um, they had just the two wins and the two draws this year, and uh, yeah, playing in their relegation playoffs. So in those playoffs, the clubs ranked seven and eighth play qualifiers against the top four teams from Division One, and then the top two teams at the end of those playoffs will earn um, their place in the top league in 2022. And that's probably it for me for a little while, I think. <laughs> well, massive shout out to Stefan for covering the Nordic um, seasons or Nordic teams and leagues all season. He's done a fantastic job. And I know that people across the, everyone who reads Beyond 90 just loves the raps that you've been doing, Stefan. It's it's probably not one of the easiest of leagues to cover because there's a, um, a lot of different lingo going on in there and VPNs and all sorts, but you've done a great job. So really appreciate that. And now we're happy that you finished that because you get to write your preview for Canberra United as well, or I'm, I'm definitely happy about that. Um, in the NWSL, there was the, the big final. So as much as we've only got one Australian player who was based there for all of a game and a half in Emily Van Egmont for Orlando Pride. But maybe surprisingly, I'm not sure, Washington Spirit came out 2-1 victors over the Chicago Red Stars. Did we do any tipsters on this last pod? Because I would have, I thought someone said Chicago and I'm like, no, oh, I'd love to see Washington win. So great yeah, to see Washington was- win that one. Chicago have won a whole. Oh, uh, sorry, Chicago have lost a whole bunch of um, finals. I would say that Chicago are the Perth glory of the NWSL. Uh, very <laughs> good up until the final product. Coincidentally, something else links those two, but uh, I can't remember what it is. Anyway, moving along. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, really good turnout for that game as well. Was it a neutral venue this year, um, as it tends to be? But yeah, really, really good turnout and supposedly a really good game. And I wonder next season whether or not there'll be more Aussies that will be playing there. I know that we've got stacks of Aussies playing in the FAWSL and or we're always interested to see how many of the players will come from the MWSL to the W League at the completion of that season. So now that it's all wrapped up, we may see one or two more announcements. I think there's already news that we're hearing that Newcastle Jets are picking up a couple of players. But, yeah, just, I mean, it's great for great for the fans and, and great for the game to have some more players players who come from different far and wide let's jump on to my favorite segment of the podcast queens of the week and we'll start off with eric's queen of the week he's not here today but he's always does his homework our eric good on him um he's given a shout out to bella sewards from football victoria emerging and bella actually writes for beyond 90 as well she's done a couple of great um write-ups for us recently including casey dumont um zim i'm not sure if you read that one on the website but you get to chat to casey all the time so it might be less interesting for you but bella has been training with melbourne city so good on you bella we're really pleased to see that after you've finished a massive year doing your year 12 studies that you've um out there playing football writing about football you're just doing great so um and then just quickly my queen of the week as well just fishlock from OL Rain was named the NWSL MVP. Massive credit credit to Fishlock. Number one, I think she was one of the first major players I ever interviewed, and I was so bloody frightened about doing that. But anyway, Fishy was great. Um, but credit to her also for working to lift the professionalism of, of the game in Australia. With Melbourne City, she played three seasons, 38 matches, and three championships. So I'm not sure how many goals she got, but quite um, quite good in the goal scoring space as well. But um, I think Jess just did a huge amount to lift the game from where it was and to show players and coaches what it was like to actually lift the game a little bit more. And also a shout out to Jess and Watford's Helen Ward, who were both selected for Wales's upcoming World Cup qualifying matches. I'm a bit of a fan of Watford, even though they're not very good, but I'm still a fan anyway. It doesn't matter. Um, all right. Who's got, who else has got there? Stefan, you've got a Queen of the Week, but I'm not sure how much you're going to say about that one. I think I'll have to change that one. So, yeah, um, Ben, our UK correspondent, uh, Ben Gilby, tells us that Sam Kerr's backflip last night was um, was only the second one she's done while she's been over there with Chelsea. So, uh, yeah, I think we'd be, be remiss if we didn't um, 
have Sam, Sammy as one of our queens of the week after her exports overnight. So first half hat trick and a and a backflip. Well done. All right, uh, Zim, are you ready with your queen, king, or joker? Um, yeah, I guess I'll go with the queen. I didn't do my homework either, but and, and this might be a little bit delayed because I think Kelly O'Hara scored in the semifinal for in and never sell. Um, and I just think she's a great player, so um, I'll just do Kelly O'Hara. I think. Yeah, and big shout out for her podcast as well. It doesn't she does just women's sports? Yeah. I think it's yeah. it's a, a, um, an amazing podcast. I mean, there's a bunch of podcasts that I listen to all of the time, and hers is definitely one of them. Uh, Molly, do you want to throw in yours? Um, I kind of want to go a cricket player, but I'll I'll resist the urge. Um, I'm going to go but for do- a. Why not both? Why not both? I could do both. Um, I think Alyssa Healy, um, she's had a really not a good time with the with the batter. She's not she's got a few ducks, which means she's got no runs at all. Um, and someone made a dig at her on Twitter and she just for being happy and you know, still enjoying the game despite not putting in, a, you know, a good run of performances. And she just, you know, replied back really well, just going, you know, um, we get to enjoy the game too. You know, it's our workplace. We get to enjoy the game. If we were being sad, you would probably say something about us then too. So um, I thought she handled that really well. Um, and she's just a great, great player and great person, it seems as well. Um, and otherwise, I'm going to go for a king. I think um, Joe Montemiro with getting the win for Juve in Europe, I think that was, that was huge. It's obviously going to open up that group a heck of a lot. Um, mm. And I've really enjoyed watching Juve for the two games against Wolfsburg. Um, it's been really entertaining, and I, I, I did it. Never wanted to be a Juve fan, but it seems like I am now. Um, so yeah, Joe, Joe Montemiro for that for that massive win. I have to get the lingo Juve. I would have just said Juventus, but Juve. All right, I'm it, on it helps it. playing at an Italian club where you go in the huddle and everyone yells Juve. Like it's just you go. Uh, okay. I've never been qualified as one of the hippest people around, but that's okay. Dale, speaking of hip people, give it to us. Oh God. I've been, yeah. Uh, my, mine was going to be Kelly O'Hara as well. Um, not only because she's a fantastic player, but you know, she, she scored, uh, as you said, scored the winner in the, in the NWSL final uh, overnight. Um, fun fact about that game, both of Washington's scorers have the, uh, the middle name Maureen. Thank you. NWSL. Uh, stats page for that completely unknown fact uh, and another shout out to a former uh, dub stalwart in Aubrey Bledsoe who was named player of the match in that game in Washington's first championship first Washington team to win a championship since, since I think the national other oh, capitals won the uh, the hockey in like several years ago there you go all right. Well, thank you for that, Queens of the Week. Good good to know. And and some kings, that's good. And no jokers, even better. Um, any tips for the games coming up between the, the US and Australia? Stefan, you look like you know exactly what's going to happen. Yep. Um, my tip <laughs> would not see Carly Rossbacken on the field on the second game. I'd love to see that. Um, oh, yes. She's jumping out of her skin, waiting to get some time in the field. So, uh I'll take her on the first game, but I imagine we want to put out a, you know, a, uh, a try and assert ourselves a bit in the first game. So um, she's on the way back from a bit of a layoff. So I'll be looking forward to seeing her and uh, some of the other, the newcomers, Jess Nash in particular, come out and play as well. So yeah, that's my tip. Yeah, I love it. Don't need a result. Just need to see some players get out on the field. That's pretty important. What about you, Zima? Any, um, any tips for the final result, what we might be looking at? Hmm. I'm hoping for maybe two new win for Australia. <laughs> oh, love it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, I think it'll be it'll just be good to see hopefully Angie get on and um like Kyra's pretty solid in, in that sixth role. So I think it'd be great to see her and Courtney too. Um yep. I'm just looking forward to seeing the familiar faces and like I said, the younger the younger girls get a chance too. That will be exciting to see. Is it only it's three players from victory who have a chance of getting on there? It'd be great if they're all on there at the same time. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Uh, what about you, Dale? Any tips for the game? Certainly the first game or, or both games. I'm only going to one. Uh, first game, my tip is uh, over five yellow cards. It's going to be wet. No way. 
and uh, we're going to want to throw ourselves about. So four yellow cards to the Matildas in the first 90 minutes. <laughs> I'm not sure what that <laughs> uh, Molly, what about your thoughts? Um, just goals. I mean, they always score goals. Um, we've had quite a few high-scoring matches, particularly in friendlies when um, it's not necessarily squeaky bum time. Um, so I think just, just lots of goals. And, you know, if it's 4-3 or 5-4 or something ridiculous like that with a last-minute winner, hopefully it goes goes to us but yeah I'm expecting expecting heap of goals all right well I'm hoping that we can shut some of those goals out I'm not sure how long it's been since we last had a, a clean sheet but I'd love to see a clean sheet really keen to see who's in the the starting 11 on game day so the games are Saturday oh I should have done my homework Saturday I'm going to be in Sydney and that's when the game is so surely I'll find it and it'll be fine <laughs> and then the second match is on Tuesday in Newcastle I don't know I'm not going to that one everyone else can find it themselves but um, it will be broadcast on Channel 10 and Paramount Plus for people who aren't able to go to the game it's a bit sad that Australia is not quite completely opened up even though international people can come in and out but um poor molly's stuck down in tassie can't get there but uh, molly we hope that in the new year there'll be some games for you also kick off very soon for the w league so we're looking forward to our, our previews coming out and we hope to get more players on the podcast to talk about their pre-season and the games as it stands so big thank you to zim for turning up and talking to us on the podcast but also special shout out because she's hoping for australia to win two nil that i think that's awesome that you know you come here and you get converted and Making big shout out to Mo- <laughs> big shout out to molly as well for joining us on the podcast really happy that you were able to be here and thanks to the guys as well for talking football with me you know i love it love talking football thanks everyone see you later thank you oh. i forgot to give eric a shout out for his birthday so shout out to eric for oh. his birthday no he doesn't Maybe- want to know that means he's getting older and then people will know how old he is uh shout out to eric happy birthday hope it's a good one you know. If you're really lucky, he'll get a tattoo of you. That's the way that he usually rolls. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have, have to do that again. Retake, retake. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You Good luck me. with the season, Zim. Looking yeah, forward thanks, to Zim. victory, Thank just you. nailing everyone. Thank you. Yeah.